This is Ryan Nidell, host of 15 Minutes to Freedom, your daily action guide on how to get shit done. If you find value in the words that I share with you, if you do me a favor and leave me a five-star review as well as a comment wherever you're consuming this content, I would be immensely appreciative. In today's episode, I'm fortunate to get to spend time with my friend, colleague, inventor, professional model, reality TV star, CJ Kogel. CJ, how are you today? Oh, man, I'm wonderful. I wish my mom could hear that intro. I will make sure to copy and paste this and send you at least that intro so you can like have that as your ringer when she calls. Like We can really set this up and, and chop this up pretty well. Uh, yeah. I, uh, hey, mom, I love you, by the way, if you're listening. First things first, got that out. <laughs> Good. Good. So for you, the listener out there, I had the opportunity to meet CJ in, was it New York where we were together? Yep. In, in New York mm -hmm. City when I was back at the web hosting world, maybe in between a good friend of ours, Chris Zellig. Yeah. Chris brought me to a dinner and CJ was at the dinner and you know Chris is the ultimate conduit it feels like if you want to get to anybody in the world <laughs> email me and then I'll email Chris and then somehow Chris will know somebody that knows somebody so absolutely Chris I, I'm incredibly appreciative I'm sure you're going to listen to this at some point love that love you to death glad you're in my Gosh, life and you know you're just an incredible human being one of the best yes yeah, so CJ and I before we jumped on on air we're catching up and just figuring out where he's at and what he's doing and Instead of going down that path, I just felt like it was necessary to stop that, I'll say, pre-interview what's off topic and what's not and just roll with things. Because CJ has this incredible story of, you know, I'll let him tell the story, but Reader's Digest version, living in Miami, coming off a reality TV show, which was the real world Cancun, if, if, yep. if I recall, Cancun, Somalia, whatever, you know, CJ laughs and, and says it that way. And was a signed Wilhelmina model down in, in Miami, but knew his life's calling was something much bigger than just that. And absolutely in that, CJ, if you can take some time and just walk people through uh, at least the entry part of your life and into the part of the story where you and I were catching up on about some of the crazy inventions you've come up with so far and how you're literally bound to change the fitness industry. I mean, the thing that you've created, that you've patented, that you put your blood, sweat, and tears into that I've now in my own very small right invested into, and I say invest into <laughs> because I, I pre-bought, uh, you know, one of the, one of your products, which I, I'll have you Thank share you. that. And it's, um, Man, it's just so exciting to have you on and get to, to get to hear your story and, and see what you're all about. So uh, with, without further ado, I'll let you start talking instead of hogging the mic. Uh, absolutely, man. Uh, one, let me thank you for, for believing in the dream, going on Indiegogo, buying one. Without me really even saying anything about it, it was such a cool thing to see you support immediately. So I'm forever thankful for that. Of for course. sure. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. So a little bit about myself, the, back to the, you know, I'll, I'll go a little bit prior to the modeling days um, in Miami uh, and pre-real world days. I was a college football player at the University of Massachusetts. I was a field goal kicker, punter. Um, from then, had a chance to pursue an NFL uh, kicking career, which came a little bit short. But that actually was one of the reasons why I got casted on the real world. They wanted to come to one of my NFL tryouts. Uh, and me be the kid on the show that was, hi, I'm CJ. I have an interest in something other than just coming, partying, and being full of drama kind of vibe, right? Right. So, CJ, I have to ask. I have to hijack the mic for a second. Yeah. Why did, other than the fact of, you know, when you say came up a little short, you as a punter or a kicker, I can just imagine you not being able to kick the field goal so the ball is physically coming up a little short. But what was the real <laughs> reason why that didn't work out for you? What, where was the, the left turn where it should have went right? Oh, man. Well, that position is one where guys play till they're 40. Okay. And so the turnover rate is really difficult. Uh, so unless you get drafted right away, you go into free agency, and unless there's a team out there that really believes in you and gives you that foot in the door, sometimes great talent just gets put to the side. And I say that in a way where I'm not even saying me being the great talent, just many kickers that I've kicked with that are even way more talented than me that didn't get a chance to. Mm -hmm. um, and then you see guys who you've out kicked in tryouts go on and have a wonderful career and you, it took me a little while to get here but now I look at it and I say hey I've had really cool opportunities in my life that I've been able to get that other people haven't in situations maybe where I wasn't the most qualified so sit back be proud of and happy for people who have success uh, and that was actually one of the main reasons why I was able to start watching NFL football again was that here's these guys living out their dream why should I have any kind of side say about it other than like congratulations man i'm happy for you right and and cj so would it be safe to assume that your dream up to that point was to play nfl football 
Like that's oh, absolutely. Of course, I mean, my whole life was involved in that. Yeah, I mean, everything I had painted on my dorm room in college, stretched three times a day. I was the guy on the team that was there first, left last. I had big old linebackers coming up to me, being like, "What supplements are you taking? What ab workouts are you doing?" I was I was really committed, man. Yeah, and so I was even in the face of adversity, it's taken you now a series of years to, to process through this. But yeah. it, it sounds like you finally made peace with the fact that your life might have had a bigger purpose than playing the NFL. Yeah, absolutely. And it, the coolest part about it is the real world was a pivotal moment in my life where I saw my whole life go in a different direction. And the fact that football in the NFL was paralleling that I thought was a pretty neat thing to go along with it. Um, that said, I mean, gosh, man, I could talk to you for an hour just about people in my life prior to going on the show who were there to help me and give me that extra step, that little bit of help. I mean, so go, so go with that. I mean, this is not time bound in any capacity. And, and if you're, oh, okay, if you're cool. listening right now, you, you're familiar enough with the content that of course my daily episodes are 15 minutes. These yep. longer form interviews are truly the stories that you share will end up having an impact on the Gosh, by the time this airs, we'll have over a million downloads since I've started the podcast, which is so Damn. crazy to say out loud. But people, what I found is everybody thinks they're alone in their struggle. And for me, it was one of the most difficult things in the world to ask for help or accept help or realize there's people along the path that generally don't want anything in return. They're just like, here, my, my hand's extended to you because I believe in you. And okay. so grab it. I'll pull you to where you need to go. And then they're yeah. okay releasing it. So, man, sh share, share as much of that as you want to. Yeah, so I would say one of the most pivotal things in my life that happened to me at this point was me and my buddies, we were out after, it was uh, in December, so we were out after practice, we were having a couple of drinks at the bar, uh, at this point, I was 21, <clears throat> uh -huh, if anybody of asked, yep. <laughs> and I bump into this guy, and the friend I was with said, hey old man, what are you doing here? And I said, hey, relax, he's just here to have some fun, and the guy looked at me and goes, hey, I appreciate that. Let me buy you guys some drinks. Well, that guy ends up being a CEO of a company locally. At the end of the night, I asked him if he has a summer job. And he goes, hey, if you know, I'm sober enough tomorrow to remember, we'll see what I can do. So he gives me his card. I email him the next morning. Hey, great to meet you. Thanks for the drinks last night. I uh, just want to follow up and see if you had a summer job. Fast forward, gives me the summer job. Him and I become great friends. He's like an older brother to me at that time during my football career up at UMass. And when I was done with school he said to me hey if you ever need a job there's one here for you and so yeah going through the football thing going through tryouts i end up dating a girl that had a year left of school up at umass and so i hit him up and i said hey i'm gonna be in that area i figured if i training for the nfl i might as well be around my old teammates be in the gym at school have the conditioning coach there to, to help me out with all that stuff and i'll be in the area so i would love the job so he gives me the job and it's going really well. Like I said before, he's becoming at that point one of my best friends. And one day he calls me into his office and he says, hey, CJ, you have so much life in you. I can't allow you as your friend to sit here in Western Massachusetts and work a nine to five job when I know you have so much more to do. You, you got to get out there. You got to be on TV. You got to do something like you have this energy. You got to give it. And I said, all right, well, let's talk. He goes, no, I'm just going to start sending you on castings. I'm going to pay you your full salary. Every morning you're going to come in. There's going to be castings here. If it's in New York, if it's in Boston, I'm going to send you there. I'll pay for your gas. No excuses. You're going. Wow. That's crazy. And that was the man who inspired me to go for shows. And, and I ended up picking up the real world. And so he single-handedly pushed me in that direction. So at that point, TJ, had you went down the path of modeling in any capacity? Like where, where did modeling fit into that part of your life? Yeah, so I started modeling at three years old, technically, JC Penney's, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then obviously didn't do much until the high school time period, but because of sports and college especially, I didn't have much time. Yep. And do a couple shoots when I was home for winter break, summer break, that style of thing, but not a career by any means. Right. Uh, but there is some photos that were circulating with the team and gosh, I have some of the funniest stories about how like that got into the Boston Globe and then my team blew it up and put it all over campus and kids around campus were making fun of me and my, oh gosh, it was, 
That's a good thing about being with 105 football players. They Whatever inch they can get, man, they take it. Of course they are. Well, I mean, why yeah. would they not? And, and I'm sure you gave it back to them, right? I mean, oh, it, it's, it's part of the community. 100%. Yes. So, so modeling has always been a part of your life. You now have this incredibly impactful individual that's forcing you on casting calls, which then brings you into the fold of the door opening to be considered for the real world. Yes. Okay. And explain that process. Like, I've never been on a casting before. I certainly have never been on the real world. <laughs> I've been in the real oh, world suite man. at the Palms doing all types of debaucherous things, but I, I've, <laughs> ne- I've, never, uh, I've never been on an actual casting. So what's that like? What's that process? Yeah, so he said to me, he goes, CJ, take this as if it was a job interview. Do some research. Don't just be the kid who shows up not knowing what's going on. So I went online, researched all the castmates who had videos online. What did they say? What were their videos like? Was there any commonalities? And I found some things. I found one of the things that everybody was doing was they put a camera in their car and they drove. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. The show's about living your life, not looking at the camera. I was like, oh, totally makes sense. So that kind of gave me the idea of don't look at the camera, talk away from it, but still include the audience. Um, And at the time, I was the girlfriend I was talking about earlier, she caught her in a situation, broke my heart. So I was like, hey, MTV, my name is CJ. I'm fresh out of a relationship, trying to figure out trust in women again. Uh, I've never been on a spring break because sports have always been in my life. So I'm kind of ready to like go out and kind of experience some spring break fun. And I kind of built this world that was like, I have an NFL tryout, so I'm serious. But at the same time, I could be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So what, forgive my ignorance, what year was, did this air slash when you were recording it what does that look like timetable wise 2009 was my real world first season and then they have the challenges which come after so i did one in 2010 and 2012. okay were you i I believe i asked you this when i was with you face to face were you ever on a challenge with david good no (laughs) okay Uh, he ended up being like he was a buddy of mine from college ended up winning one of the challenges and lives in a small town and like comes from a truck driving family this wild story he also played football at miami of ohio and your stories are very uh, similar Similar. you know model kind of the same thing so there's obviously some some commonalities on what mtv might be looking for in certain castmates but yeah uh, yeah i I can say yeah yeah yeah, (laughs) i'll digress from that and allow you to continue down the path of what the real world was like yeah i mean it It was such a cool thing to be a part of because people always ask, was it edited? And did they make you do things? And they they didn't. I mean, everything about it was you open this door of a van and they say, this is your experience. Live it. And the only way they talk to you is if it's to take off your mic at night or because it's spring break style fun. Sometimes it can be an aggressive crowd and, hey, this is dangerous. Let's pull you out so you guys don't get beat up kind of vibe. So other than that, I mean, everything is real. Where it gets a little hairy is that there's 13 one-hour episodes that are comprised of 2,500 hours of film. So, you know, they can take a little bit of editing here and there, and and the context changes a bit. But Of course. Yeah, it was a blast, man. It it sounds like it. So you do that. You then go back to, like, how do you end up in Miami? So you you come back from the real world. That's been a good experience. Mm -hmm. You don't know the challenges exist yet, I would have to imagine. That, does that come later? Or do you know when you come back, the challenges are coming? Uh, it just depends. I mean, challenges are one of those things where they look at the newest cast members and say, are any of these, do we want any of these people on a challenge? Yep. So it's a crapshoot. Okay. So what, what's after the real world? What's, what's the next step in your life? Yeah. So I, I came home. Um, you're getting reached out by a ton of people. There's one guy came and he said, hey, um, I'll pro bono manage you. Uh, I only make money off of things that come in. And I have a relationship with uh, a person down at Wilhelmina if you want to meet them. So that's kind of how the Wilhelmina interaction happened. Yeah, because you're Um, still a signed model with Wilhelmina right now, correct? I'm sorry? Are you still a signed model with Wilhelmina as we speak? Yeah, going on a decade. (laughs) I feel like in the modeling world, that has to be an eternity, right? Like that turnover (laughs) rate seems like it would be like every, if you sign a six month contract, I would call that a win and you're going on a decade. Good for you. Oh man, I can't believe it. And let me tell you something. This is one of the most important parts that I also don't get a chance to tell a lot of people is I was so amped out of my mind to sign with Wilhelmina. Yeah. It's that and Ford, right? I mean, those are the only, like, those are the only two names I know of modeling agencies that are global. Yeah. It was huge for me. And so I'm like telling my mom, telling my dad, and I tell my sister. And my sister, genius, businesswoman, 
uber successful, she says, hey, I'm excited for you. Congratulations. But you will get old and wrinkly and your hair is going to fall out. So you got to figure out something else to do while you're modeling. And I'm like, well, buzzkill. Thanks, kid. <laughs> and at this point, you're 23, Five. 25. Okay. Yep. So I'm like, you know, yeah, you're right. But I don't want to hear it. Of course not. You know? So, uh, yeah, she put that little file underneath my butt to figure out something on the side. And I figured, well, you know, if I'm making money and obviously at that point and you're starting the career, you're figuring out clients, you're building your portfolio and year after year, your clients grow. And then that's when you can start making some some good money in the industry. So I said, you know what? She's right. Let me not be upset with her. Um, and let me start thinking of something I can do on the side. And that's when inventions were already in my idea book. And I was like, well, let me just start thinking about this or at least saving money so I can implement some of these at one point. Well, I'm really surprised you have to save money. I mean, I would imagine you being on the real world. I mean, you're set for life after that, right? You're coming home with seven figures in the bank and endless appearances. I mean, the heavens have opened up and just invited you in at this point. Is how I'm assuming yeah, what, this works for you? That's what you would think. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Let me tell you, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but we made about $150 a week doing the real world oh that's almost criminal like oh man the i mean it's not because the exposure i get it but i mean come on 150 dollars a week like that is a guy like you that doesn't even feed you for a week oh man let me tell you so here we go i knew before i got on the show well it's 150 up front and then at the end they give you the four months of 150 dollars a week at the end too so oh. maybe that makes it less criminal um, uh-huh yeah but before we went on the show, they sent us this packet and the packet had all of the names of the clubs and facilities that were cleared by MTV before we got to Cancun. So we're in Cancun about a week and every night you go out, it's all in like all you can drink nights, which is like 50 bucks a night. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know about y'all, but I'm not going to be going out much because I can't afford 50 bucks a night. Yeah. So I was like, I got to do something. So I walked up to the club owner one night and I said, hey. Your club's awesome. We love coming here. Thank you so much for being accommodating with us. But we're going to be here for four months, and there's no way we're going to be able to come as much if we have to pay 50 bucks a night. And and I knew at that point he had already cleared that we were with MTV. I wasn't allowed to say it to him because it was part of like our contract. You can't tell people what you're filming. Yeah. But he's like, oh, I totally understand. Come as much as you want. We'll give you bottle service and everything from that point on. I just figured out how to get it for free for us. Of course. And save my $150 a week. <laughs> yeah, but there's ways around it. I mean, so as much as I wasn't making at the time post real world, I always knew that there was opportunities to make money mm -hmm. because of the influx of eyes that were coming to whatever it was that you were doing. Yep. Uh, one of my regrets was I just didn't have anything to put those eyes on my first two shows I was on. Um, my third one, I built out a online program uh, at base where it, you sign up for it, it automates you a workout program nutrition plan. So at least on that one, I capitalize a little bit more. But looking back, I would have if I was to do it right now, I could see how yeah, you don't have to pay me that much money because I'm going to make a, a ton off of the influx of eyes. So that's hindsight 20. Well, of, of course, and I think that's such an important lesson for everybody that's listening. No matter where you're at in your, your progress or your process that you're going through, that consistent exposure matters. So even though you know your, your life has catapulted in its own directions, it sounds like so far from a combination of who you are and who you've met, but also capitalizing on exposure that's presented to you, whether it's modeling or, or the real world. But it's, you know, we can look at this now in the social media age. The content that you as a listener are putting out on a daily basis eventually can turn into something if you do it for long enough, consistently enough. I mean, podcasts that you're listening to right now is a perfect example. I'm 100 and, gosh, I don't know, 20 episodes in with a million downloads and all types of crazy stuff coming. But that was never the intention for me. It was just knowing that consistency will eventually matter. You know, that whole compound effect where you do anything in small increments for long enough and good stuff ends up happening. Absolutely. Like it just, it, I just think it's such. It just dawns on me as you're sharing this. Like, you're you're seeing it both sides now because you the first two times you didn't have something to capitalize on, and the third time you did. And uh, gosh, I mean, you have a. I've I've seen you on magazine covers. I mean, there's all types of <laughs> things now that you've done that are above and beyond, which we're going to get into. But uh, good for you for recognizing that and then capitalizing on it. Yeah. Thanks. I, you know, I think a lot of that comes with maturity, mm -hmm. mistakes, 
you know, it's, it's, I look back at a lot of things in my life and, uh, even the show, I think the way I handled myself, I was at that point already out of college playing ball. So I knew not to go crazy on the show because my mom was going to watch it. Yeah. You know, I family, I didn't want to hurt my relationship with the people I loved. And I didn't, I come from an amazing Christian family and I didn't want them to look at me and say, really? This is this is who we raised. Mm-hmm. So I always had this thought in my brain: let me go on, have fun, but not to the point of it ruining my character. Because I think you know, characters like an oak tree it takes a hundred years to grow and ten minutes to cut down. Right. And it's, I think, one of the main reasons why I don't do challenges anymore is because sometimes, even in the act of acting right with the wrong edit, it can make you look wrong. Yeah. And uh, I think character to me is more important than another TV show. I mean, it's, that's that's so just incredible to hear and and see. Like it's that's so counterintuitive for the way that the majority of the world I feel like views. Like, oh gosh, I could get back on TV. You've been at this now. It'd be nine years, give or take. Yeah. You know, and they're still potentially inviting you. We have to get into the, the details of the last time they wanted you on a show. But the fact that you're present enough in the moment and know where you want to go, that you're willing to turn down an opportunity. Because that's going to lead to a bigger opportunity if you don't go through that door. Absolutely. But that's that's just crazy, crazy, crazy for the way that I mean, we're now society. I'm, I'm, I still battle with this. Like, I want the gratification today. Like, I want success today. I want notoriety today. Oh, I mean, don't don't get it twisted. I, I, I also have that inside me, too. Yeah. I think we all do as humans. Uh, but, you know, I think in the grand scheme of things, like you said before, You know, you didn't think the podcast was going to go this way. Um, The same I didn't think of YouTube videos I put out, one with our our mutual friend Chris. You know, we did a prostate video and we strapped a camera on a girl's butt, had her walk around New York City and caught guys looking at her. And the whole point of it was to laugh, but also teach guys that one in seven men are going to get prostate cancer. It's nearly 100 percent preventable if you catch it early. So check your own butt, too. So real quick with that, if someone were to Google a term, obviously that's still got a lot of weight behind it. What would my listeners, what would they Google to have them find this video? Because the video is hilarious. I mean, it it went viral. (laughs) You were on TV shows all throughout New York City with that, right? I mean, that was kind of like the the first thing that I remember Chris being like, I created viral content. (laughs) Yeah, that one was so fun. I mean, that one is, uh, I mean gosh, NYC butt cam probably will pull that up. Lord knows what would pull yeah. that up. Um, my YouTube channel has it, uh, just CJ Kogel on YouTube. You can find it there. But the beauty of that video was, let's just give an example. Business Insider saw that video, looked at my actual YouTube channel, saw fitness videos, which I think are terrible, but they were like, oh, we need fitness content. And because of this random YouTube video, Business Insider picked me up as their their business contributor, and they started running my my fitness videos on Business Insider, which launched me from 200 subscribers to almost 10,000 within within three months. Wow! So this putting out content and allowing it to find its own legs is it's a real thing. Yeah, and, and this content it, it's such a beautiful segue. The content that we you create, or that it sounds like you'd recommend people create, the same way that I would. It's not done for effect per se. You're doing it because you you almost feel called to do it. You don't know who's going to digest it. Yeah. You don't know when it's going to be digested. You just know it's, you're a Christian, so I'll say God, assuming that that belief system hasn't changed, that somebody is streaming yeah. this message into you like, I need to create this content. And That's certainly you want to honor your own you know commitments to your belief systems and, and what's appropriate and what's not. But at the end of the day, because you had all this backfill of content, your life took a different trajectory. Absolutely. Man, it's it's just it's, such a cool thing because I think we get lost in like everybody especially now wants I want that viral hit. I want to be the next sensation. I want that and then because of something eventually went viral, you got a job that had nothing to do with the virility of your your original message. Yeah. It, it's it's so cool. I mean, we made another one about the subway systems and how to act on the subways, which that ended up getting us on a morning show which led us to meet the producer of the morning show which is now one of our best buds. We take him surfing. We get him out of his comfort zone. He goes rock climbing. He's He quit his job that we met him at as a producer of one of the morning shows to start hosting, um, sorry, executing producer of one of the top podcasts. And he just, his whole life has changed because we just, through this video, taught him that, 
hey man, if you don't like your life, you got to figure out a way to change it. And he was fully capable of doing it, made the change, and he, and he loves his job, loves his life now, all because of a New York subway etiquette video. You know, it's <laughs> right. a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. And with that divine intervention and the fact of getting back to your, your timetable here, you're, you're, you've now got back from the real world, you're a Wilhelmina model, you're signed, you're going down the path of various inventions because that's something you know you need to diversify your own personal portfolio because eventually your looks are going to wear out. Looking at you on camera, I don't know when that, the hell that's actually going to ever be, but one day, you know, <laughs> Thank you. one day it'll come. You're going to be like the, the no, you're sure. going to be the Stetson model, like with the the pepper salt and pepper gray hair, just a little bit of wrinkles under his eyes. Like that's going to be you in another what forty five years with how you oh, age. Oh man, I'll take it. Yeah, of course. Of course. So I'm not, ex I'm not complaining about that. Ex explain this <laughs> next progression. So you're you're in this invention mode and, and then what? Yeah, so I mean at that point, um I was fortunate to have a buddy whose dad's in, been inventing for forty years. And I was working out on a BOSU at the gym and I was stuck to the circle circumference doing a push up. And I was like, Oh, I wanna go wide. Well, I can't unless I go grab another one or I have to flip it over and use the side I didn't want to use. So laying in bed that night, I had a BlackBerry T-Mobile, <laughs> T-Mobile. So obviously my internet was going slow and uh, I, was, I was searching and I couldn't find anything that was push-ups with an unstable bottom. And so I reached out to my friend, asked him if I can have any insight on how to do it. And he said, hey, uh, file a, a patent search and see if you can see if anything's out there came back nothing and so at that point i started raising some some money saving some money to, to put in the patent and then at that point um i was able to meet with some investors which gave me some insight on growing myself in the fitness industry which led me to to move to new york city which is great but this you you you, you brush past this massively like it, it's your life so it's not as impactful as as i feel it to be but you okay. shared with you shared with me prior to this that you literally are in this space in Miami, you end up knowing that there's an investment meeting in New York. You you come up to the investment meeting with an idea, like paint that picture if you could, almost the same way. I don't want to tell your story. I mean, I, I can do it. And I'll butcher it to yeah. no end. I'm I'm happy to do that, but I feel like why would I do that when I have you in front of me? So share share those pieces and parts, and also the 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 overcomes you've had when you came to New York on borrowed money. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll bring you all the way back to the beginning. Yes. So Max is my buddy. And Max's dad has been inventing for 40 years. So when they knew I was in the process of wanting to invent something, Max's dad and Max set me up with this meeting uh, with $16 billion of money in the room. And I probably should have never been in that meeting because here I am with a 3D render that my cousin made me in my hand. And at the time, I also had an ad product, which I had went to Home Depot and made a, a really quick mock-up of a prototype of it. But what I did have was the belief that these two products could be good fitness products. I knew that. And so I went into this meeting amped out of my mind to show them. Um, and honestly, the fact that they had $16 billion, it didn't, uh, I, I don't remember in the meeting even caring about the money. It wasn't like I was nervous. It was more, I'm passionate about this. I got to figure out how to do this. Um, this is going to be my meal ticket when I'm old and wrinkly and my hair is gone and Stetson doesn't want me as an old male model. Right, you know? yeah. So I go into the meeting and the passion came through. They're like, oh, do we love your passion for the products. We actually dig the products, but there's a couple things that we want you to do. We want you to find a way to patent it yourself, spend the money. Um, actually, I didn't say this before, but the, the second thing was they wanted me to be able to prototype it myself. And that's a pretty big deal because then you're looking at, I mean, now I know how much they are. They're like $9,100 a prototype. So, yeah. you know. That was a big ask for a kid who didn't have much money at the time. And the third thing was grow yourself in the fitness industry so when the product comes out, you don't have to pay somebody to be the face of it. You can be the face yourself. And how, how many years ago was this now it, from today? Uh, oh, five years back? Six years? Yeah, a little bit over five years. Yeah. Okay. Going on six. Yep. So I left the meeting amped. I was like, that was successful. These guys didn't tell me no. Yeah, they gave me some blueprints of things I need to do and very respectful people in, in obviously business and in fitness were in the room. And so I put my head down. I was like, I got to figure out how the heck to do this. So I leave 
the meeting, I start Googling fitness companies, fitness brands, and Wilhelmina pops up that there is a fitness division in New York City. So I was like, this is cool. I'm already with them in Miami. Maybe I can get with them in New York. So I reach out and talk to Topher and Topher was like, hey, you know, we, oh, actually, let me pull back. Here's another way that someone helped me in my life. A guy named Marty. I need to mention him because he was one of the biggest reasons why I'm with Wilhelmina in New York City. So Marty is a person who will just come like a life coach. Yeah. And he, he's there for you if you need him. And I was telling him about looking for modeling agencies. And Marty said, oh, hey, I know a guy named Topher in New York City. Let me send him a couple of pictures of you. And I was like, well, that's great because I've already looked at Wilhelmina in New York City. This is amazing. Within like 25 minutes, Marty had a text message from Topher saying, hey, I'll be interested in taking a look at him. Um, let's connect them. So Topher and I started emailing and then that's when Topher asked me to come to New York City uh, for about a month and a half, meet with clients, check out New York, see if I like it. And if it goes well, then you know he'll give me a contract and I can move to New York City. Sounds great. Borrow some money from one of my buddies because I had none, 4,500 bucks. And I go up to New York City and my first week in New York City, Sandy hits, hurricane, bam, whole city shuts down. Yeah, so, so you're in a new city on borrowed time, and borrowed money, knowing mm-hmm. that you need, if you don't secure jobs while you're here, you don't have a job. Like, the, the, yeah. the, what, you're, what you're desiring is going to collapse. And you're now faced with the fact that there's a hurricane that's eliminated any possibility, at least for the near future, of making any of that stuff happen. Yeah. That's so crazy. So, I mean, fortunately, I was staying on the couch with a family friend. She was only charging me $800 a month at the time, which in Florida, that gives you like a two-bedroom apartment. Yeah, and you you get a couch for eight hundred bucks. Couch, I mean, man, not even a good couch, like a frat boy pull out futon couch. Yeah, but that, that's New York. I mean, when I think of New York, anybody I know that lives there it seems like unless they came from immense wealth, people in New York City start out on somebody's couch or sharing a one bedroom apartment and having four people stay in it. So yeah, yeah, okay. it's the beauty of New York, though. That's like part of the story. It's what makes actually that apartment was one of my favorite apartments because of that story. Yeah, I loved it. Uh, so a weekend, Sandy hits, and the city shuts down. I mean, there's no work happening. I mean, from 34th Street all the way down. I mean, there's no electricity. Trader Joe's throwing out all of the food because it's gone bad. Mm-hmm. And the city starts getting hairy. So about a week into it, lights come back on. Um, but not every business was going back to work yet. So I was left with about two weeks at the end of that. And... Topher being one of the best agents in the world, set up all these meetings. I went out, I met all of the clients. Um, Fast forward, it went really great. They believed in me. They gave Topher the thumbs up and Topher was like, hey, we want to sign you. Now you just have to figure out if you're going to move to New York City or not. And so that was my my moment of, do I go back to Florida, Uh, pick up my whole life and, and move to New York? Or do I just stay in Miami and, you know, just be in Miami? Right, so it's at some capacity. I mean, it, from the outside, you are forced with a decision: do you take a leap of faith based on your dreams and personal ambitions, and that internal self belief that eventually you're going to find a way? I mean, I have it tattooed inside my arms. I'll find a way. Or I'll make one. Like there's some yeah, of us that awesome. operate that way. That like that's how we believe. And then there's another subset of people that, when faced with that adversity, just aren't ready to have that internal belief system and obviously by the fact we're having this interview in new york i think it's safe to say you ended up moving to new york city (laughs) yeah man a month and a half turned into i'm going on seven years now yeah that's so crazy that it's been that long that you've been there so i'll i'll give you uh, a little insight on how chris zelig came into my life please do Uh, which is our mutual friend and so i met chris zelig in florida at a beauty pageant (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> was, no one believes was, us. was he doing somebody's hair i mean i feel like that would be that would be a chris story that he like manufactured his way into being a, a hairstylist <laughs> yeah right he well in chris true chris fashion he was dating miss indiana of course of which course. was the judge and i was also a judge okay and so chris came to one of the night meetings that we had before the next day of judging and that's when i initially met chris um Vegas Chris purple pink shirt with the studded jeans and I'm like oh man seems really funny probably not going to be one of my best friends and I, I joke with him about this still today yeah um well fast forward I send out 
a Facebook message saying, hey, I'm going to move up to New York City. Does anyone have an apartment that they know of that's available? And Chris's girlfriend at the time messages me back saying, I'm moving to L.A., but we can throw up a blow up mattress in the apartment and you can stay with Chris. And I was like, well, that's neat. How much is the blow up mattress going to cost? And to my surprise, blow up mattresses are twice as expensive as frat boy pullout couches. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Yeah, man. And I, See, who thought? I, so, I um, remember that yeah, girlfriend. I moved in with Chris. That's crazy. I remember her. I that was I met I started meeting Chris or knowing Chris when she was around. That's yeah. I like completely have blocked her out of like this whole story. And that, not not disrespectfully, not that she'd ever listen, but man, that's that's wild that that's how this all started cuz you were my, you were a judge at the same pageant she was. <laughs> yeah. And we tell we tell this story and people don't believe Chris and I, but it it's the truth. Uh, so I move in with Chris and 2 weeks into that Chris and her break up and Chris says, well, uh, we're going to not sign because they were on month to month. We're not going to sign this month's lease. So you're going to have to find a new place. So I'm like, oh, God. All right. Well, um, I have two weeks to find a new apartment in New York City. Right. Which led me to obviously putting out another Facebook message. The beauty of life is that another good friend of mine who's still my friend today said, hey, I just signed a lease in Brooklyn. I'm moving to LA. I won't even have lived in it for a day. You can have it. It's just magic, man. I was just, how, how is this even possible? Um, it ends up being like the show friends, four girls lived downstairs, four guys lived upstairs in a four bedroom, two apartment. We had a 30 by 30 oak patio that both of our, our apartments have a, a staircase that goes to end up being like one of the coolest situations I could have ever gotten myself into randomly off of Chris breaking up with this girl. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, so I, I, I must ask, this is sheer morbid curiosity. As a Wilhelmina model, what does that contract look like? Do, I don't even know specifics. Like, do they pay you to move? Like, do you get paid? Do they just take a percentage of every job that you make because they book them for you? Like, I don't know anything about that industry, and I'll just ask. I mean, shit, I don't know. I don't know many male models or female models, so <laughs> it's an easy question to ask. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty basic. It's a three-year contract, um, usually exclusive which means you can't sign with another agency in that same demographic. If I want to sign with a different agency in Chicago, I can, but in New York City, it would just be Wilhelmina. Yep. Uh, you have, um, I guess the stipulations are you have 90 days to get payment. So sometimes you can work a job today and not get the payment for 90 days, uh, which could be interesting if you're not good with your money. Yes. 20% um, of the stuff that they bring you. They keep. It's pretty basic. Yeah. So, it's easy. and I, I ask this because as you're, you're signing and Topher gets you set up and sees the talent that you have and you're, you've borrowed the money to get to New York, but there's not like, okay, well, we'd love to have you here. And by the way, here's a $4,000 signing bonus because you're amazing and we know we're going to make a bunch of money. <laughs> like that's not, we're, we're yeah. going to pay for you to move yeah, and we'd like you to be in New York. Like that does not happen. No, it does not happen at all. Um, but I can tell you one thing. The one thing I love so much about Topher and Wilhelmina is they didn't give me financial stability right out of the gate with money, but they gave me a family. They gave me people I could rely on. Uh, shoot, I bet if I got kicked out of my apartment, Tofu would let me live with him in a second. You know, he's just become such a close person. So I did have that comfort of saying, all right, well, I really don't know many people in New York City, but I just got grandfathered into this amazing family, very similar to college football. You get grandfathered into 105 uh, teammates. Yes. Um, so I felt comfortable moving to New York City, knowing that I was in good hands uh, with such an amazing agent. Um, f fast forward, I was a groomsman in his wedding. You know, it, obviously our relationship turned into much more than just him being my agent. Um, I trust him with my kids, future kids. <laughs> right. Not the ones you don't claim right now, but the ones you'd have in the future. Those ones we just don't talk about. Yeah. Com yeah, yeah completely yeah. kidding. Mom, if you're still <laughs> listening, there's no illegitimate children running around. That That's not how this works. Oh, man. Gosh, can you imagine? Oof. Oh, you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can. I can. So, you know, so here here we are. You're in New York. You've couch surfed. You're in a new apartment. It's, it feels like friends. You're a Wilhelmina model. You're booking jobs. So there's some sort of cash coming in, but you still have this project that you need to fund on the back side like you, you have you've got an agreement the whole reason that you came to new york in some capacity was because of the initial opportunity to create a fitness brand yes so how do you get from 
I'm new to New York and I'm living on somebody's couch or blow up mattress for $800 to $1,600 a month into saving the money or finding the money to start what you're actually passionate about. How does that work? Yeah. So a lot of that was because Topher had such good relationships with the men's health, men's fitness of the world. Um, I started getting booked for those jobs. Uh, while I, I mean, realistically back to when my boss told me when I was going for the real world, go into it with intent, go into every meeting with them as if this is, is a job interview. And with Chris being my best friend, which is also one of the top, I would say digital marketers, he taught me be creative. And so when I was going into these, these castings, when I was going into the jobs, it was never, I'm going to go to this job to get this money today. It was, I'm going to go to this job to meet everybody on set, have fun, leave a lasting uh, memory of myself. And in the process, maybe meet the creative director or, or meet the guy who's in uh, the vice president of uh, making new clothing, like somehow make this more than just a transaction of I show up, you get a photo and I'm out. Um, and I think the moment when my mind switched from that, just getting money into let me figure out how I can meet everybody inside men's health, men's fitness, Nike, Under Armour. Yeah. That's when my career really started taking a, a different route because it allows you to be creative in casting. So I went to a casting with Lululemon and I brought them a lemon that says, I love Lulu on it. Nice. And yeah. Just left it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, I, I, I preach is such a unique term, but I, I, I do preach the fact of truly being present in the moment, like being here now, like eliminating distractions. And if you're in any moment throughout the day, if you can disassociate yourself from the things you're physically going through and realize that there's truly a gift that's in front of you, like the people that you spare, share time and space with are not there by accident. It's are you are you willing to extend yourself and get to know people and energetically exchange? And it sounds like you're now a case study for the fact that that actually works. Like it's not some <laughs> crazy thing I just came up with. Like that's how you live your life, which has opened up these additional doors consistently. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I come from parents who have always taught me, CJ, you treat the janitor the same way you treat the president. It just is what it is. This is a child of God and they deserve to be treated the same. And that carries over in every aspect of my life. And I think when you walk around this city where people can be so stressed and down and you smile, right? And you change your narrative and you say, no, that's not going to be my life. I'm going to be somebody who walks around, finds happiness, uses the city as a creative backdrop, meets people who have similar likes and interests, finds myself in a relationship with a beautiful woman who is like the most lit up human I've ever met. And yeah, it makes sense why you can find happiness in a place like this where people tend to say, oh, it's stressful. Um, and I think a lot of what you put off, whether that's openness or or giving off this vibe of, yeah, you can talk to me or yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind. You know, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, how people uh, will, will one react to you. Um, if I was to relate this back to the modeling industry, I would say these are big budgets. These companies like Under Armour pay thousands of dollars a day. Why me? And I would ask this question on set. Why me out of every model in, in the country? And they say, well, in the casting, we thought you were really fun too. We thought it would be cool to work with you on set. If we're going to travel with somebody, might as well be someone that we get along with. And I just paid attention to this stuff. And I'm not better than anyone as a model. I don't think by far one of the, I personally don't think I stand high and above any of the guys on the board looks wise. I just think a lot of it has to do with being personable, being creative, and at the same time being able to get the job done too, yeah. you know? Well, of course. And, and that, you know, ties into, uh, I had a conversation with a young lady last night and it was just imperative and repetitive to keep reiterating to her what you're seeking is actually seeking you as well. And so if you're yeah, you're putting so out true. that negative energy, that negative energy is going to come back to you whether you realize it or not. You are truly in control of all of your thoughts, emotions, activities when you realize they exist. Once once you know that they exist, you can control how you want them to interact with the rest of the world. So again, if you're if you're seeking happiness and abundance and success and good relationships that are pure and whole, those will inevitably find you. Like yeah, what, what, what's crazy is, okay, and I'm going to put you on the spot here just for a second. And it, it's, right. I don't care what the desired, the desired outcome is not anything more than the story. So okay. for those of you that are listening, 
there is this little blue check you can get on Instagram. Like it's, <laughs> and this little blue check has ultimately no intrinsic value. Like it means you're verified. It means Instagram agrees the fact that you are someone of high caliber quality, whatever whatever their things are, you know. Yeah. And yeah. I have been approached by numerous agencies. Not modeling agencies, Lord knows, not fucking modeling agencies, but agencies <laughs> that help people get this little blue verified Instagram check. And so I've I've contemplated it because of you know ego and fragility of of who I am and all these different things. And for that, they want to charge me twenty five, twenty seven hundred bucks. And I for a while was contemplating. I'm like, man, it'd be cool to have it. Like I see all these influencers and all these famous yeah. people. Like that just that's a little feather in my hat. And I'm like, shit, am I gonna do this? <laughs> and I put it to the side because it's like it's so wasteful. Like I don't I don't know anybody. I, I mean, I shouldn't say that. I have some friends that have the blue check that have earned it. I'll say the right way. They didn't buy their way into the game. They they yeah. Instagram reach out to them. And so I haven't yeah. spoken to CJ. Like this is on my list of things to achieve this year is to figure out how to get the blue check, but get it the right way. And so Absolutely. I haven't spoken to CJ for five years, six years. Obviously I see him and Chris go back and forth on some photos and stuff online. Like we're connected, <laughs> but we're not super close. And all, all of a sudden we're, we're pinging each other back and forth and talking about the podcast. And Chris says to, to CJ to reach out to me, this, that, the other, we take this sharp right turn where he's like, CJ is, is telling me, I think I can get you a blue, like, would you want to be Instagram verified? And I'm like, number one, he has no idea I've wanted this. How nobody knows. Like this is a quiet internal office. Like a shame to say out loud. Like my ego wants me to have a blue check, but yet CJ knows somebody inside of Instagram by again another chance meeting, which I got to have you share because you shared it with me through text. I'd love to hear the actual story. And he's yeah, like, absolutely. It's like, bro, I might be able to introduce you or connect you or at least have this guy look at your account and see if you could qualify, this, that, the other. And again, I don't care. This is not to like put you on blast like, oh, is it ready to go? It's more of a thing of like, I was seeking that. I was searching for it. It's energetically what I was looking for the universe to provide me. And here yeah. you come out of left field after five years with at least an opportunity into someone that might be able to make that happen. Whether it happens Absolutely. or not, completely material. God, this story is just another great example of no matter where you're at, what you're going through in the moment, still maintaining the the mindset of just being a, a human being that cares for somebody else. I mean, that's it. It wasn't like I did anything over and above. Um, and you'll, you'll hear it in the story. But I had just, uh, I was working with Zappos at the time. Um, Zappos puts you up in a hotel in Vegas. And one of my buddies, that's also another client, Southern Marsh, saw that I was there. And he's like, hey, it's EDC weekend. You should stay for the weekend. It's going to be super fun. And I'm like, ED, what? And he's like, oh, uh, just stay, man. It'll be fun. So um, I get this text. He's like, dude, come over here. It's this amazing pool party. Come see us. So I get up out of my chair. I get into an Uber and I'm going to meet up with him. And I realize I left my wallet at the hotel that I was just staying at. So I'm freaking out about it. Um, and in this process, I'm like darting up a staircase or I don't know what's Gosh, I'm going to be like, oh, the model doesn't escalator. know what the moving staircase is called. An escalator. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> You're a real smart model. Let's talk about inventions. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> so I'm running up this escalator and I bump into this guy and I'm like, oh, dude, I am so sorry, man. I just lost my wallet. Uh, it's no excuse to, to bump into you like that. And we just got into this conversation. I stopped and we just talked the escalator up. And at the top, I was like, hey, I got to run. Um. And I was like, hey, it was great chatting with you. And from that point on, I just went about my day and I get a direct message. And he's like, you know what? I thought that was you. I'm a fan of, of the real world and realize you're not verified. And I was like, oh, dude, that how small world. Um, and two weeks later, he sent a message to his buddies over at Instagram and Facebook. And he got all of my accounts verified. Um, and his the, the message sat deep with me because he says thank you for being so kind and i'm like well dude i bumped into you <laughs> yeah the fact that i said sorry should just be normal right and um that to me i think is uh it was just one of those learning personal learning lessons which is like ah i mean sometimes you it normal is amplified because ah man i mean sometimes this place can be this world can be a little difficult you know, and I think to just remember to just be kind is is really important. And and it just happened to get me verified. You know, I just yeah. good things happen when you're kind, I think. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that is, it's such a crazy story. And just, 
the way that it came into your life and the way that then you've been in mine, it's just really, it just proves, I mean, it, I sound like a broken record now. And as, if you're listening still at this point in the episode, it's, it's pretty crazy. Good things happen when you put out good things. Like, Absolutely. Because I used to, again, you know some of the CJ from listening and from our catch up. Like I wasn't always a good person, like lying and cheating and manipulating and uh, anabolics and not that anabolics make you necessarily a bad person but i wasn't living this altruistic life of wanting to add just consistent value to everybody around me it was really in the back of my mind it's like all right how can i use this situation to get something out of it on the backside? like just Mm -hmm. owning my shit and it's not i'm not proud of that but that was up until two or three years ago that was still my you know mode of operation that was still and again it it might not have been prevalent to everybody around me because i was pretty solid at manipulating like Yep. And, it, you know, sometimes it was conscious, sometimes it was almost an unconscious passive thing of like, all right, well, CJ's a model and that means CJ knows models that are females. So if I could end up in New York with CJ, I can probably be around some attractive chicks. And if I play that game the right <laughs> way, I can start seeing something like and my mind would start spinning in all these new variations. And that would be then every time I was around CJ, hypothetically, this didn't actually happen. I would have been looking to try to get into something else that CJ could have opened that door, and that was the only reason I was talking to him. Where yeah. I just knocked all that shit off. Like there's, there's other than connecting with a now somebody that I can say is a, not that you haven't always been a friend, but like rekindling this friendship and you yeah. know seeing where it goes just organically. Like I don't want anything out of this. Like I just love, yeah, I love bullshitting with you. Like it, it's awesome. It's super fun, and the thing that I love, and and obviously being able to tap into some of the other interviews that you've done is owning who you were, Mm -hmm. realizing it, being open to talk about it, I think is awesome, right? Because it allows us to, you know, understand that you can change. But the thing that I love that I heard you say recently too is doing it for you and not caring about who is, so to speak, I mean, obviously caring about the person, but not saying, well, what is this person going to think about my change because they know my past? That's not it. Like the change is yours. You change because that's who you are. Yeah. Not worrying about, oh, this guy used to be this and now he's fake because he's this. No, this is who I am now. Right. It's it's awesome, man. I commend you. Man, I, I appreciate that, CJ, sincerely. And now that I'm making the episode where I'm interviewing you about me, I'm going to flip the script back around and get back on track. You know, we just completely went on off on this tangent. So you you're you're making money you're booking jobs you're in new york city you've got an idea you've got a path you've got a, a plan you've probably you, you shared with us you went down the patent route you got the patent you secured it you also yep. secured the prototype obviously what happens after the patent and the prototype so got the patent got the prototype and wham got hit with this hurdle which was prototype comes back weight slides out uh oh what do i do now well, I have to go back to the developers, reopen the developmental, um, basically the, the, the tough part about it is when you go back into developmental, you can't just click a couple buttons and everything changes. It's like, all right, well now we have to build in a locking mechanism. So the weight doesn't slide out. Uh, all right, well, what is that going to be? Well, that that's going to be a couple thousand dollars on the developmental side. And now we have to repatent the whole thing. I mean, not repatent. Well, technically, you have to repatent it to to add that into the patent, but you have to reprototype, which, like we we mentioned a little bit earlier, is around ninety one hundred dollars for the prototype. So now I'm sitting there going, <laughs> "Where is that going to come from?" Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, TJ's working the corner of third and you know eighth, like th- thumb out, hit, hitchhiking, selling his body for for money. Yeah. Com- compl- that's a good corner, though. Yeah, it is. You know, whatever you would know. I mean, that's where it, one of the times I picked you up was there. So I, I get it. Yeah. No. So you know. You know what I thought was funny when when you picked me up, the thing that got you was I put two thumbs out. It's true. It's it's all marketing. I mean, like Chris said, you have to be different. You have to you know, not be afraid <laughs> yeah. to push the comfort zone. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, so, one of my buddies, James Ahedabo, at that point was playing in the NFL, uh, starting safety for the Lions. I reached out to him, and I was like, "Hey, man." I, I know you guys uh, on a high profile athlete standpoint are, are doing some funky training. Do you guys use anything like this? And he wrote back, can I invest in it? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, if you really want to, you know. And so uh, we got into this conversation about him coming on as a, a very small investor, but it was just enough to get me over that that hurdle of, of needing some money to get the final prototype in 
uh, utility patent in, and then that is what gave us the ability to go into the Indiegogo and, and get this thing rocking. Which is wonderful. And I think now that you've painted the picture on where you came from and the hurdles you've overcome and all these incredible people that have come into your life to make this happen, how about we now fully share the magic that is your product, the name, what it is. Like I know because I went to the Indiegogo and invested and I've seen, I follow you on Instagram, not only you, but also the account associated with the brand. Yeah. Pitch us on the brand. Share share with us what it is in your vision because I'm going to share what it is yeah. in my vision. Like You pitch it any way you want to. I already have my pitch set up for you. <laughs> awesome. So one of the things I haven't been able to talk enough about is why I called it auto. So the, the product is called auto, O-T-T-O. Uh, you can spell it forward and backwards the same way you can use the product. And it happens to be my middle name. So that's where I got the name auto. From. Nice. Okay. I had no idea. Is yeah, auto a family so name? The is, the product, that, is that If I was to give you that elevator pitch, it is if the BOSU ball had a baby with the perfect push-up handles. So you can do your push-ups with an unstable bottom. But depending on the user's ability, you can release the handles from the spheres, use the handles on the ground as regular push-up handles, but you can customize the weight of each handle between one and 10 pounds. So you can actually start doing some push-up to rows. You can flip the two mini uh, stability spheres over, stand on top of them, and use the handles now as dumbbells. Um, you can put the handles back on the ground, put your feet on the spheres and do unstable push-ups with the feet on the spheres and then doing it with the handles as well. But the cool part I really, really love uh, also is if you're coming back from an injury and just need balance stability training, there's resistant band clip-in points on all eight sides where you can clip in resistance bands and do nice basic squats to overhead press so you're balancing on the bottom, resistance on the top. So the product breaks apart in a way where you can use it separately or put it all back together and do your unstable push-ups, push-up to rows. Uh, so it's super functional. Uh, it came from a inventor who has dug into the fitness industry and wanted to create something that's not gimmicky. You're not going to hide it under your bed and never use it. And this is like my writing a book. This is something that I'm passionate about that I know works uh, in a way that's going to give you a amazing product that you can work out at home. I mean, it's I'm not saying if you are somebody who wants to gain massive amounts of strength, that this is your end all be all, but it is your product that you have in the house where when you can't make it to the gym, it's really good to maintain. Or it can be the person who wants to be leaner, who wants to just have that product that's there for them at home, that likes working out at home, that gives you strength, stability, balance, and uh, resistance all in one. It's It's a rare product. I think it's something where Obviously, coming from me as the inventor, you're like, oh, yeah, obviously you love it. But honestly, man, I think people like you seeing it and then going on and buying it right away really holds a testament to to the beauty of it. Yeah. And, and, and CJ, if it was to come in a box, and obviously it will come in a box at some point, what to, so the listeners can understand this physical size, if everything was condensed down into a shipping box and I were to open it, what's that box? Eight inches by eight inches by eight inches? Does it fit? You know, is it 12 by 12 by 12? Like how big of a package does it come in? I mean, you're, you're asking the guy to, to talk about inches. You know, obviously, I'm going to call it bigger than it of is. Of course you, know? you are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, I would say think of it as a duffel bag that you can take to the gym. Okay. And um, I think, obviously, if you are bringing all the weight with you while you put it in the duffel bag, it's going to be a little heavy duffel bag, but the beauty of traveling with these is that you can leave the weight at home and, and bring the apparatus with you. I mean, I think it's very, very powerful as an at-home product that personal trainers and people could use to bring and train their clients as well. But yeah, I mean, I wanted it to be a little bit smaller, but the beauty of it having it bigger was I did a test on elderly. I did a test on people who are high professional athletes, and I watched them step on different size spheres. And I went with the size that I noticed that everybody steps up on it in a comfortable fashion. And I said, you know what? That's what I'm going to go with. I'm not going to limit myself to a specific size that I had in mind. I'm going to go with the size that's best used for the consumer. Of course. I mean, this is five years in the making and at least three years, it sounds like, of R&D of different capacities. So yeah. you're not coming to market with some harebrained scheme. Like There's a lot of time, energy, and effort and research now from a plethora of different variables that have been consolidated to make the best product possible for the marketplace. 
Yes. Absolutely. And what I love about it, what made it so simple and impactful for me, many of you that listen know that every day I, I do something called the core four. So body, being, balance, and business. I'm, I meditate. I journal. I you know send a note of appreciation to my wife and to our, our daughter. I read a business book and I then journal how to apply the business book into my daily life, so it actually comes back and, and gets into my you know into my daily repertoire. And then I drink that green smoothie that's fresh every day. But then I'm also supposed to sweat every day. And there's some days for me that physically finding the time to go to the gym, I know it can't happen. But I've made this commitment to myself in the morning that I am worthy of this time and space. So when I saw CJ's product, I'm like, wow, okay, so I can leave it in my home office. It literally in my mind will fit in a corner. It will fit underneath my desk. It will fit somewhere like that. It's got – push-up ball like i can do squats for stability i can do push-ups on on the the the, the i'll call them mini bosu balls just to yep. to clarify it i can yeah. do i can get some fitness bands and, and attach it to them and i can do you know resistance band curls and overhead presses and lateral raises to the side while adjusting my stability and i'm like man i could definitely come up with a 15 minute workout on those balls and not balls Absolutely. i mean there's a lot more to it than just the balls but i come up with a 15 minute workout that would tax my muscles would help me stretch would induce a level of sweat increase my heart rate and i don't have to physically drive to the gym and i can still then check that box in the core four i know i've done something to better myself so it eliminates the variable of having to go to the gym so time and also eliminates the variable of like i don't know how to work out because it it's just push-up handles and bosu balls that are condensed down with additional attachment points like i don't want i don't want to downplay the significance like when you no, i think it's a perfect way of describing it yeah and it's just this like when i see it i'm like man for was it 90 what's what's 90 bucks 97 bucks something like it, it's not that expensive uh, 197 okay but you know <laughs> <laughs> so you know there's it's so inexpensive when i look at you know my gym memberships here are a hundred bucks a month plus if you get a trainer and even if i'm only using this product twice a week for secondary exercise or even like ankle mobility for me is a big thing because I'm always yeah, tight. Absolutely. So you, know, you I can go down this whole path of exercise physiology and why this product works and will continue to work and will backfill in the kind of the holes in your in your workout routine. And if you, if you can't do it in the morning, it's a perfect thing to re-energize yourself at lunchtime in your office. Like if you're physically, yeah. and maybe you don't have your own office, you're working for somebody else, you can still put it in the bottom drawer of your desk, pull it out and sure, people are going to make fun of you, but fuck them. It's not, it's not up for them. It, you know, you're in your own body. So like, you can sit on it yeah, exactly. in your seat. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, all, <laughs> yeah. all these things have massive impact. So I didn't buy one or invest or however you say with Indiegogo because CJ is my friend. It was a no brainer when I saw the product. And you can go to what, what's your Instagram page for auto? Uh, Instagram is auto training, O-T-T-O training or my personal page. I po post a lot of stuff about it. Uh, CJ Kogel, K-O-E-G-E-L. Um, that's also, I mean, another thing is you know, I love listening to the Gary Vaynerchuk's of the world as well. And I think value, 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 value is so important. So for me, the product is a catalyst that I'm able to say, here's what we're going to use. But then here's tons and tons and tons and tons of content workouts that give you something to actually turn on and say, oh, this is how I use it. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not, and yeah. you have that all over all the social media channels. I mean, you're already using the product consistently. And there's I mean, every time I look at your feed, there's a different utilization. It's not like you're doing the same push-ups in the same position every time. Like, there's just – I feel like you need to come out with, like, an ebook or an info product to show, like, 125 different ways to use auto. And you probably have more than that. I mean, I'm sure at this point with how your brain works, there, there's probably – just minimum, there has to be 200 different variations of workouts. Yeah. We're over, we're over 400 yeah. right now. Okay. So the, the, but, you know, it's like squatting with on it, squatting with off of it, squatting with the handles. You know, it's just so much you can do. Um, but, I mean, that's just us. I can't I can't wait till people get them and send videos of them using it. Yeah. Uh, and just seeing how creative people get with it. Well, of course. And so many people will message me like, I'm, I'm afraid I don't know how to go to the gym. Or I feel in intimidated because I've let my body go. Or I never was in shape. And if I go to the gym, I'm going to be judged. And there's all these things you know societal confines that we unfortunately have adapted or adopted over the years and so i look yeah. at this as just another incredible way to start breaking some of those down where you can use this to catapult you into an environment where you feel more comfortable like Absolutely. the fact that cj has an entire training you know repertoire training series of videos that show you how to use this so you don't have to be insecure it's not going to take you a ton of time but for those of you that don't have a super active lifestyle there's massive shifts that will come from just 15 minutes a day of doing something like yeah 
for it's, sure. It's crazy how this, think, this works. I think you should start a podcast about 15 minutes or something. I think that... <laughs> my, my ne- the next one I launch will be 15 minutes, just like the book that I have coming out. I might have the term 15 minutes in there somewhere. So th- th- there's... Oh, man. There's, if, there, if you had a 15-minute cliff note book, bam. Right to the top. Amazon, Amazon number one bestseller for sure. Oh man, it's dude, this is awesome. I love talking about auto. I think the the one thing as an owner of this product that I'm excited to do is, like you said, build a community where people feel welcome. Doesn't matter shape or size. Doesn't matter where you're at in your fitness journey. You come here. You're welcome. Like that's it. Like yeah. <laughs> and, and and hopefully now as you're listening, CJ is saying that that's not because he's the business owner. Like that's how he lives his life. Like. The fact that you obviously can't see him as you're digesting this, but the fact he's a male model and has had success in the visual industry should not and does not belittle the fact of the quality of person he is as a man. Like, it's great that he's got this medium that can connect with people, and that's his visual appearance. But if, I, if you can take away anything from this, it's, that's like an eighth of who he is. Like, the quality of person you are, CJ, and what you stand for and what you believe in and the energy you put in the world – makes changes for those people that are around you. And by releasing auto, you can now have changes happen for millions of people versus just the people that happen to stumble upon, you know, pictures or content online. Thank you. If I could say what I said in the beginning, if my mom could hear that, I think she would be proud. And I think that's one of the things that when people ask me, what's one thing that you want to do in your life? And it's to make that woman proud. And I think, um, I really, I really appreciate that because when you're gone from this world, what people say about you, I think is, is an interesting thing. And I, and I think if I'm putting out into this world, what you just said, business doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. Modeling doesn't matter. That stuff is secondary to what I believe is, is your character and what you give this place. Yeah. Thank you, man. If I'm sweating, but it's tear, in the sweat <laughs> right right I, I i hear you i'm sweating in my in my studio in my office as well so I, i'll say I'm, I'm i'm tearing up from my underarms so however yeah, 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 yeah. however we want to look at that we just bro it out here for a second so i love that <laughs> no but with all, with the utmost sincerity cj i mean I, I truly value the time you shared with me today and what you stand for and the passion behind your project and i'd look forward to seeing you go to market i mean obviously any of the marketing stuff i mean you're surrounded by chris and some other people but we as GSD Media Group, you know, get shit done. Get shit done, Media Group. The stuff that we do here. <laughs> if there's anything we can ever help out with, I mean, obviously, I, I'm I'm in it. Like I love all this stuff across oh. the board. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to come on. Thank you for building a platform for people like me to come on and share, um, dude. The fact that you're transitioning into this amazing person yourself, going through the changes, dude. It's great because it gives people like me. Um, something to see and listen to and understand that like you're not alone in mistakes guys like we're all in this together we all make them and uh the fact that you're such an amazing dad watching like this stuff is it, it's dope man I'm, I'm happy to be somebody who clicks the play button and listens to all the podcasts man i'm, I'm honored that you do so and it, what's crazy is like you knew me i mean five years ago i can't say i was at a dark place but i, I certainly had at least three different girlfriends and was lying to everybody so like the man that you knew me when we're sitting around having sushi for the first time, like yeah. which, which is our first meal together, to now it's like a, like I don't even feel the same. If you were sitting in the studio, I can make eye contact and never look away because there's just nothing left. Like there's no dark secret, no dark passenger. Like it's just me fully being in the moment. And I think it's impactful to share that no matter how bad of a path you've been on, It's just that compound effect of making small changes every day for long enough until people stop itemizing you and characterizing you as that person. Like that person I was three years ago is completely unrecognizable to who I am today. Absolutely. Even even six months ago, like the growth and the progression and things I'm open to now. If and you shared it in the pre you know pre interview or maybe even on the show. If those people want to judge me, that's now on them because. I'm judgment free. Like I, I'm exactly. I've done it for me. This is a, a thing of living a good life because it's important to me to put myself what I call in personal power, and then my family. And if you're not in my family or you're not me myself, all I can do is be who I am. And if you like me, you like me. And if you don't, you don't. Like it, absolutely. And I think that is a true form of freedom in itself. 
Yes. Like, this is who I am. I'm not scared to say who it is. I have no secrets. Actually, man, one of my, I was recently able to tell my parents my last secret that I held from them. I got to, I got to know. That's what the show's all about. Share the secret. Oh man. You can't bring it up and not share tell it. The whole world. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I, I smoked the devil's lettuce one time <laughs> or a few, you know? <laughs> and so it was like this thing. My parents were like, so anti. And one day randomly I was home visiting and I said, guys, you know what? I'm done hiding. I smoked some weed. And that was the last thing I hid from my, my parents. And uh, I would say it, it was hard to tell them too. I felt so bad about it, even though, you know, those days are past, but whatever. So how, how was the judgment on the backs? Like what happened with, obviously your parents oh. didn't disown you from this. You're, you're, you're still the apple of their eye and, you know, the, the beacon of hope for the, for the, 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 the Kogel name. Like, what? Oh, they were great. They didn't care. Of course. They're like, oh, we, yeah. Okay. Well, and, and so what I found is, and it sounds like it sound, you could probably verify this on your side, the perceived reality of sharing a tough message is always worse than the actual reality of getting it out couldn't be more true it's so true like so those things that we're holding in that we don't want to share that we're hoping we kind of run from but we know in our soul we shouldn't really it's it's the fear of the outlash or the backlash that comes from that and it's never that bad like sure it's gonna be bad like you feel badly yeah but you probably hugged it out with your parents and had dinner afterwards and like everything was cool and it doesn't come up anymore absolutely absolutely and they they know my true character man they know who i am at my core i mean you build this narrative in your brain that they're gonna be so mad and it's like you said it's this built-up narrative that is usually not anywhere near what you think is going to be. And that's business. That's castings. That's everything. I mean, you can think of a million questions they're going to ask you at your casting. But it you could go in there and be like, hey, uh, what's your favorite sport? Oh, wow, that was such a tough question. You know? It's yeah. Like, the narratives that we build in our brain can, can really hinder us. But, yeah, man, this has been amazing. I'm glad I've been able to open up about some stuff I really haven't talked to or talked about which is awesome man I, I feel honored and privileged that you felt comfortable to share that stuff with myself and anybody that's digesting the content so sincerely appreciate your time today cj couldn't be more happy to, to share to share our stories and catch up with you and want to encourage you and everybody else that's listening to continue to get shit done 